Now, one of the things that's kind of interesting about this is if I look at this for a second, like right there, one happens to be VGCD, right? Just like this above problem, five happened to be the GCD. If I wanted to kind of do an unrolling process, could I write the number one all by itself? Well, sure, I could take this three sevens and move them to the other side. Right. But then on the other hand, seven is also this thing. But seven is 51 minus two twenty twos. So I could get rid of all sevens and replace them with the 51 and two twenty twos. And so what would be on the on the left of this side a 22? But if I would take this seven and get rid of it, I would then have 51 and 22s, which would move over to this side, replacing that seven. And so what would happen? What would happen is if I would do that process. So one is a 22 and a negative three sevens. But seven is actually a 51 minus two 22s, right? Because I got that from that line right there. But that tells me that one, how many 22s do you see? I see seven of them. I see seven 22s and negative three 51s. The thing I just did forms the is an example of Bazout's theorem. Bazout's theorem says this. You can always write the GCD of A and B as something times A plus something times B. And if I look at this problem, this was the that was the GCD of 20, uh, 51 and 22, was 1, and that's 722s. That was 722s and negative 351s. And this is always true. It ends up being that if we use Euclid's method, we could throw it in reverse. Do exactly what I just did, solve for the GCD, and if you go backwards, we could figure out how many 22s and how many 51s are necessary to spit out the GCD. And if we look at that, kind of an interesting question is why is this interesting? Well, we have a little definition. If you have the GCD of A and B is equal to 1, we call AB relatively prime. What does it mean to be relatively prime? What it means to be relatively prime is that they share no prime factors. Right? If you would look for what, what common, if I would factor the one and factor the other, and we find all common prime factors, and the answer is they have none, then they're going to be relatively prime to one another. They don't share any prime factors. So obviously, do prime, are primes relatively prime? Yes. Right? So... The GCD of 7 and 5 is 1. That's always true. Now, why am I kind of interested in that? What's interesting is this idea of a question of what is the multiplicative inverse in modular arithmetic? Why, you know, what I'm looking for is like this. Uh, three times what number, when I would divide by, say, seven, would spit out a one? Because I know what the identity is. The identity is one and eight and 15 and, right, but one's the one I like. It's the family. It's, it's the, 
lowest of the positives, so we start off with one. And the problem is I got to I want to find the multiplicative inverse. And one of the questions is not everything has an inverse. I'm going to know 3 times what would give me a 1 when I divide by 7. You guys scratch your head and it's like I could do this the hard way. Okay, I all numbers are broken into if I divide by 7, how many groups do you get? You get 7 modular groups, right? 0 is the same as 7, is the same as 14. 1 is the same as 8, which is the same as 15. In other words, we only have true remainders of 0 to 6. So we only have 7 things to check. So I could just take numbers and start multiplying until I figure out by random guess and check what number does this. Okay? So we could do it by brute force. But that doesn't even answer the question of what if it never looks like it multiplies to 1? Because it might not have a multiplicative inverse. What things have multiplicative inverses? The things that have multiplicative, multiplicative inverses are answered by that. So let's look at this example right here. I have 22 and 51. So for what we found under our example was 7 22s plus negative 3 51s is equal to 1. I have that. This has happened because the GCD of 51 and 22 was 1. They are relatively prime. What would happen if I did mod 51 to both sides? What happens to that thing? You have negative 3 groups of 51. What's the remainder when 51 people come up to pay that bill? Zero. Because it's a multiple of 51. So that becomes zero. What would be left would, would be 7 times 22 mod 51. That becomes, this here becomes a zero. It's going to be equal to, well, what's 1 mod anything? 1. What did I just, what did I just find? Two numbers that multiply under mod 51 that become 1. So what does that tell you about 7 and 22? They're multiplicative inverses under mod 51. Because this thing's a 1, we then have found so 7 and 22 are inverses under mod 51. And it also answers the question, what would be the only possibility to ever have it multiply to 1? It would be the GCD would have to be 1. So that allow, then finally allows us to simply say, when do I have multiplicative inverses? So if you're going to have A times what? mod m, I'll call it this way, uh, what, I'm going to use bar. That, mean, that bar means a's inverse under mod m, right? This happens only when a, the GCD of a and m are 1. So now we can answer the question, what numbers have multiplicative inverses? Only numbers that are relatively prime to whatever you're taking the modulus of. So if you're taking mod 3, what numbers would be uh, relatively prime to 3? Well, anything that doesn't have a factor of 3. So all of those would have multiplicative inverses. If it has a factor of 3, it does not have a multiplicative inverse. What if you're doing mod 15? What are the factors? What are the prime factors of 15? Three and five. So, wh who would have a multiplicative inverse? Anything that does not have a factor of three or five. If it has a factor of three in it, or it has a factor of five in it as a prime factor, then it would be non-invertible under mod 15. How do I find inverses? So, this happens. 
and we find A inverse under mod M by using Euclid's algorithm on the GCD of A M and then throw it in reverse exactly what we did. So now we know how to add, we know how to multiply, and we know how to undo an add, which is just subtract, and undo a multiply, which doesn't always happen. This is actually kind of new. What numbers under normal algebra didn't have a multiplicative inverse? What's the only number that doesn't have a multiplicative inverse under normal algebra? It's zero. Everybody else had, you know, it's like, what's the multiplicative inverse of three? A third. Right, now we have an entire class of numbers that all said none of these have inverses, but these do. It becomes it comes down to this must be true or else an inverse does not exist. Okay, so 